For part three, we'll explore the binomial distribution. So some properties of the binomial distribution. Um, first off, the binomial distribution is just a very common type of discrete probability distribution. There are other common types like the Poisson um, distribution that we're not going to explore in this class, but I just want you to experience at least one common type of discrete distribution. Um, the reason why this is good, why, why it's nice to know if something's binomial or not, is if you recognize a variable's binomial, then calculating certain numbers like the mean, the uh, standard deviation, the probabilities become very simple, or at least relatively uh, easier. So a binomial distribution is going to be an experiment um, or a variable that has a set number of trials. Um, so in other words, we have a set sample size. We might look at maybe tossing a coin 10 times, and so our sample size would be 10. And then each trial either is going to have a success or a failure. So like tossing the coin, um, you can either get heads or tails. If we're interested in counting the number of heads, then a success would be considered a head. Um, and then each trial is independent. In other words, if I get three heads in a row, it's not going to change the probability of me getting heads or tails on the next row. So, um, and then ultimately our variable is counting the number of successes. So if I'm counting the number of heads, a success would be a head, and I'm counting the number of heads, the number of successes. So if you think of the coin tossing example that I just gave, it's pretty easy to identify if something's a binomial distribution or not. If it behaves like tossing a coin 10 times, then it's binomial. The only thing is, is that it doesn't have to be 50%. It could be any percentage. It could, it could be 15% and 85%, you know, 15% chance of one thing happening and 85% chance of the other thing happening. All right, um, so just to summarize, a, bi a distribution will be binomial if it has a set number of trials. We're counting the number of successes. That's our variable. Each trial is either going to be a success or a failure, and we're going to have a set probability of success and a set probability of failure that's going to be the same for every trial. Um, we can use lowercase p to indicate the probability of success and lowercase q to indicate the probability of failure, which should just be 1 minus the probability of success since they're complementary events. A few quick things about the binomial distribution. The expected value is just going to be n times p. Um, this is actually a formula that you knew before even coming to class. We're just overcomplicating an easy concept. The standard deviation is the square root of NPQ, and the probability of X is the number of combinations um, where you have N as the number that you're basing it off of and you're choosing X, times the probability of a success raised to the X power, the number of successes you want, times Q, the probability of failure, to the number of failures. All right, uh, this formula is a little tricky to use, but it's not too bad. All right, so let's, uh, let's go through these. So first, let's figure out if a distribution is binomial or not. So suppose a surgeon performs a specific risky surgery on 20 different patients. Um, the chance of death for the surgery is 10%. Again, it is a risky surgery. So we're interested in counting the number of deaths in those 20 surgeries. So this is something that the surgeon would want to know. You know, um, they might want to know, he might want to know, or she might want to know, on average, how many deaths should the person expect, or um, what the standard deviation of deaths may be, or what's the probability that you know six people die or four people die. So to go through this, if it's binomial, there has to be a set number of trials. Well, we have 20 patients, so m would be 20. X we're counting the number of deaths, so since we're counting the number of deaths, deaths has to be considered, or death has to be considered a success. Obviously, this is only in statistical terms. A surgeon would not consider a patient dying as a success, but statistically, we call it a success because that's what we're counting. So no value judgments here. <laughs> um, so a success would be a death, and a failure would be the patient surviving. Again, only in statistical terms. The probability of a death is 10% or 0.1, and then the probability of failure would then be 90% or 0.9. So since we're able to identify all those things, it is a binomial distribution. Um, so going back to this uh, surgeon or doctor example, let's find the mean and standard deviation. So the mean is just going to be n times p, 
So that's 20 times 0.1, which is 2. As I mentioned, this is actually a formula that you're familiar with. You just may not have seen the formula for it. So this is really the same thing as saying, what's 10% of 20? Because we expect 10% of those 20 people to die. Well, if you're doing a percentage of a number, you just multiply. So that's all we're talking about. What's 10% of 20? Well, that would be 2. Um, and as far as interpreting this, we're saying that when a surgeon or a doctor operates on 20 patients, we expect on average uh, two of those patients to die. Of course, it's very possible that 18 of them die or maybe none of them die. But on average, when we do this, we expect two. Uh, the standard deviation, um, just multiplying 20 times 0.1 times 0.9 gives you 1.8. And then taking the square root of that will give you about approximately 1.3. Interpreting this is a little bit uh, complicated. I'm going to use Chebyshev's theorem since it's not a normal, it's not a uh, mound-shaped and symmetrical distribution. It might be close, but it's not exactly. Um, so I'm just going to use Chebyshev's theorem. So let's see, the average was 2, the standard deviation was uh, 1.3. I'm going to double that to create an interval where I expect at least 75% of people to fall. So that will give me negative 0.6 to 4.6. Well, obviously, you can't have negative patients die, so I'll just make that zero. And then 4.6, I guess I'll just round it to five. So in other words, we expect at least 75% of the time when a surgeon uh, performs this operation on 20 patients, between zero and five patients will die from the surgery, which implies that at most 25% of the time, more than five patients will die. So in other words, if a surgeon regularly has six or seven patients dying, then they're underperforming. They're not doing well. Okay, um, fortunately, though, we can do better than Chebyshev's theorem um, since we actually know the exact probabilities. So in other words, yes, this is the formula for the standard deviation. And it's useful in the sense that a larger standard deviation means that we're varying more. But I wouldn't really use Chebyshev's theorem here. In fact, don't use the standard deviation at all. I learn how to calculate it, but beyond that, I'm not going to ask you to interpret it for a binomial. Okay, uh, let's explore finding the probabilities. Um, there's three methods. I showed you the formula. Um, you can also use the table in the back of your book in the appendix. It's table two. Um, if you just uh, click on the ebook, um, any any section, um, and then just on the menu on the left, it will show. Uh, you can immediately jump to any section you want. Just jump to the appendix section, and there's about four pages in there, or five pages, showing just different um, probabilities associated with the binomial probability distribution. Or you can use a calculator to just do it from start to. Um, um, just a few buttons and then the TI-83 or 84 calculator will automatically calculate these probabilities. And um, you're welcome to do that if you have a uh, TI-83 or 84 calculator. Most of the cheaper calculators don't have this option. But again, I'm giving you three different ways to do this, so you'll be fine no matter what. All right, uh, let's explore the formula very quickly. This is not my favorite way to do this, but because, again, calculators or tables will be faster, but this is how you do it. So we're revisiting our surgeon example. Suppose we want to find the probability that exactly three patients die. So we know our numbers from before. N is 20, X is 3, P is 0.1, Q is 0.9. Plugging those into our formula, um, we have 20, choose 3 um, for combinations, 0.1 raised to the third power, and 0.9 raised to the 17th power because 17 patients are going to live if three patients are dying. Anyway, um, I did honestly, I did this in my calculator. I just used number of combinations, 20, choose 3, and I got 1,140. Um, and then just did the rest of my calculator, and I get approximately 0 0.190. So there's approximately a 19% chance that exactly three patients will pass away from the surgery. All right, um, exploring the table method. So I just took a quick screenshot of what the table looks like in the back. Um, so the beginning of the table looks like this. It's on page 551. Um, one thing to note here, though, is that this table isn't going to give you the probability of a certain number of successes. It's going to give you the probability. Oh, it's called a cumulative probability. It's going to give you the probability that x is less than or equal to that number. So in other words, if I look up um, a k value of 2, your book calls this k. 
Um, that means we're just trying to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So zero successes, one success, or two successes. All right, um, so that's what this is showing you on the top here. So I'm going to, um, there's only a few, uh, sam um, the table's broken down by sample size. So as you can see on here, this would be the table if our sample size was 5. The one right below that is if the sample size is 6, etc. And then they show, I think, all the options from a sample size of 5 to 10. And then it jumps to 15, and then 20, 25, and, and then actually that's it. So if you have a sample size other than those numbers, you can't use the table. All right, so I, jumping to um, this part of the table where n was 20, um, we have we want to find the probability that exactly, well, I don't remember now. I think it was exactly, let me go back, uh, three patients dying. All right, so here's k equaling 3. And so the probability, so we're going to highlight that line. We want to find the probability that exactly three patients die. But this is giving us the probability, and again, our p is 0.1. So this 0.867 is the probability that three or less patients die. So how can we get to what we want? Well, um, we can look at the line right above it, because this is the probability that uh, two or less patients pass away. So if I subtract those two numbers, I'll just be left with the probability that exactly three patients die. So that's what I'm going to do. So we have 0.867 minus 0.677 means that 19 patients, or sorry, 19% of our patients, or 0.19, will be the probability that exactly uh, three patients die, I should say.